I know that uh, the day is getting a little, as we say in Canada, long in the tooth. So I'm going to try and keep the, uh, this conversation lively uh, and with lots of audience interaction. The discussion that is at hand is creating an entrepreneurship environment in Oman. So as you can imagine, that is a subject very near and dear to my heart uh, and one which um, not only is it near and dear to my heart, I'm very committed to because that's why we have Startup Oman. So the, the panel today aims to discuss uh, factors that could potentially create an environment which um, urges SMEs uh, or people, because they wouldn't be SMEs until they get into the business, um, but to become an entrepreneur. And you know, starting with things uh, like education, uh, attitudes, so you know, personal attitudes, how do we drive attitudes from, you know, uh, senior and family members all the way down to our young people to create uh, an environment for entrepreneurism. Um, attitudes, uh, you know, the, the concept of, um, what would I call that? Um, well, for lack of a better word, capitalism. You know, the, the, the concept that we value uh, entrepreneurism, we, we value capitalism as a way of creating economic impact. And of course, things like risks, incentives, how do we, uh, how do we make uh, it more de desirable for more people to become entrepreneurs? So I've, got a, uh, I've come up with a series of questions, and what I'm going to do with this panel, a little bit different than other ones, is I'm going to s ask a specific question of each individual on my panel. I'm going to give them the time to answer, and then we'll do a little Q&A uh, after each individual question. So let me first introduce my panel. Um, to my immediate left here, I have Aisha al Mudaka. She's the CEO of the Qatar Business Incubation Center. Next door, I have Adel Al-Amri. Al <laughs> okay. Rashid. Uh, Barashi? Rashid. Rashid, oh my goodness. I've just been calling you Adel for the last five minutes. I am totally apologizing. Rashid Al Barwani, Rev GX. Um, I have uh, Jalal Al Hadrami from Celebrity Glo Global Investment. Is that correct, Jalal? Holdings. Yeah? Holdings, okay. And Helmut Schulz from um, Roland Berger. All right. So, first question up. Um, I'm going to direct this one to Aisha. So maybe let me just go back a little bit for a little bit of background. So you may recall yesterday there was a gentleman here from the Central Bank of Oman and he referred to a report that was written by CBO in August of last year. If uh, any of you have seen that report, uh, you'll know how incredible uh, it was at pinpointing some of the issues. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you go find it. You can, you can Google it. Um, the report actually highlighted four pillars uh, that any environment who wants, or any society who wants to create uh, an environment of entrepreneurism needs to consider. They are, first up, policy and institutional support. Things like uh, reviewing policies that pertain to SMEs and entrepreneurism on a regular basis and ensuring that those policies are flexible um, and uh, negotiable as, uh, as the, uh, the economic uh, environment requires. Uh, the legal framework. This would be things related to fair competition, um, obviously lots of research-based um, frameworks to support the legalities of entrepreneurism. Uh, some of the things that come to mind for me would be things related to, for example, bankruptcy laws, uh, contracting laws, um, obviously manpower laws. Those would be the kinds of things that I would expect under the legal framework. Uh, the other one would be access to financing. Uh, so of course this would be um, simple as loans, uh, risks assessment, uh, credit, uh, all of those elements that come into the, the area of finance. And lastly, infrastructure. So incubators, um, 
something that's not done here, but I know that Jalal has quite a lot of experience on is really in um, integrated clusters. Uh, so the idea of having clusters within the environment that encourage entrepreneurs to come together. Public-private partnerships, and of course, one of the subjects that we keep tripping over, which is availability of data. So that's a, a bit of a challenge for us here in Oman. So for Aisha, with her experience in the um, incubation world, I wanted to ask you, Aisha, um, so Oman itself has a kind of an absence of formalized networks that allow SMEs to access commonly sought information. I would like to know your thoughts on how Qatar has dealt with that issue and what recommendations you would have for Oman. To uh, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Uh, thank you for asking me to be in this uh, panel. I'm so happy to. Oman for me is my second country, so I'm familiar with the place. And uh, I can t I mean, I'm not here to preach what's best for Oman, to be honest, because uh, I was actually very impressed with what I'd seen yesterday. I had a visit with the National Business Center, uh, the Knowledge Oasis, and I've seen a few incubators. Uh, I've seen the investment that the government is trying to do to encourage the private sector and encourage uh, startups and, uh, and investments in startups. So I'm very impressed with wh what there is. So I don't think there's an excuse for any entrepreneur saying, oh, you know, we don't have this or no, don't have that. Uh, and uh, it, it, was, uh, it was with me and my colleague, and we were also very impressed to see that all of them were Imanis. All of them were there, dedicated, in their offices, trying to make a difference and try, trying to open businesses. So for me, as a Qatari, to see something like this, I was very impressed. And actually, I, I, I want to learn from that and take it with me back home. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, what we do, I mean, in Qatar, and uh, I mean, how, how, uh, how it all started and where we are at the moment. I mean, the talk of... Uh, Diversifying the market is one of the major, uh, I'll try to stick to the script, but I don't know if I would, but <laughs> I'll try my best. I tend to uh, distract myself and talk about other things at the same time. But uh, in Qatar, the, the great thing about Qatar is that, um, yes, Qatar is, uh, for entrepreneurs, it's not really their career choice to start with because I mean, the opportunity of working in the private sector, in the oil and gas, and there's so much opportunities of big projects in Qatar at the moment, that that would not be the priority of the choice. However, said, having said that, uh, there's a lot of movement, and uh, Qatar is working and investing heavily, heavily on diversifying the market and uh, creating uh, a market that would fit uh, perfectly with the supporting entrepreneurs and injecting uh, Qatar, uh, Qatar economy into the country, and this is a priority for Qataris. Having said that, there used to be, I mean, when I talk about 2008, 2009, there used to be uh, so much different initiatives that talks about entrepreneurship, we want to open this, we want to support this, we want to be the one supporting the entrepreneurship scene. But today, we're actually, we're all working together uh, to make sure that this happens and this helps with the network. So at the moment, uh, Qatar Business Incubation Center was created by Qatar Development Bank and Social Development Center, who their mandates are to support entrepreneurs. So really, we're all working in one space uh, to make sure that we have the same mission, and Cubic's mission is to create the next 100 million Qatari real companies. And so having the government sector supporting incubators uh, in the best way possible, I think that creates a network by itself. And uh, another thing that, um, I mean, uh, and you see, oh, well, as we see that the, the more investment, the more support of the entrepreneurs, you see that their entrepreneurs are more interested to set up their businesses and see what opportunities are there and take advantage. Obviously, we live in a society, it's very similar. I mean, I'm, I'm very familiar with the Omani society and Qatari society. Uh, I don't know how to say this in English, but we are wide in Taqadi. So we criticize a lot. We say, you know, oh, well, we don't have these things. We lack financing. We lack, uh, the government is not supporting us. But that's not true. I mean, there's a lot of different opportunities. But you have to take the initiative and go uh, do something about it. And there are entrepreneurs. There are great entrepreneurs that I've seen. Uh, I've seen a lot of Omanis in Qatar at the Challenge 22 
And I was very impressed with what I've seen. And the same thing over here, in, in, uh, I mean, uh, the same thing over in Qatar. There are a lot of businesses that are growing at the moment, and the government is supporting it. Qatar Development Bank uh, supports, um, uh, supports us and entrepreneurs by the services that they provide. As an incubator, we provide uh, technical support, we provide coaching, mentoring. Uh, we work a lot on the flagship, our flagship of program called the Lean Startup Program. And it's been working very well as a methodology for the Qataris because uh, they don't work on their business plan to begin with. They actually, we encourage them to burn it before they join us. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, just, just as they join us, but then later on maybe, maybe differently. But uh, to begin with, we invest in them to really encourage them to go to the market and look for customers and get their validation even before developing their final product. And we've seen uh, so far, uh, I mean, uh, from our experience, uh, we've seen so far that there are uh, uh, 600 applications where uh, uh, not all of them were, in, uh, were part of the program, but uh, a number of them were part of the program. And so far we have 36 incubatees and we're expanding into a different uh, location, which is great. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, having said that, I mean, it's not just us that makes this happen. We have the Qatar Development Bank support us. So all the services that the Qatar Development Bank provides is channeled to us. And I saw a similar uh, thing here in Oman. I mean, there's the Raf, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, there's the Rafid uh, Foundation of Investment, and I believe that all the other investments that are related in Oman is now under it, if I'm not mistaken. No. Uh, okay, maybe yes. so and so. But I think that's where they're heading. And uh, the incubators are working together. They have one, yes. one space together. So I think when you have the different bodies working together and not in silo, it makes a huge difference. Plus, there's the private sector, of course. I mean, it, uh, I'm going I'm, I'm to stop, uh, uh, stop talking soon. But there's also the private sector. We work closely with the entrepreneurship organization, EO, and I believe they also have a chapter here. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, so we work closely with the private sector and entrepreneurs and people who have big businesses, family businesses. It's just the mindset of, and, uh, the mindset of how we think about the organizations that are available and how the entrepreneurs think about the availability uh, that are there. Thank you. Um, I wanted to just, uh, because this topic that I have is quite a juicy one, and there are so many elements to the various pillars, I thought rather than leave questions to the very end when we have the risk of losing some of the insights that we gain along the way, that I would f take the questions from the floor. Does anybody have any questions specific to the subject of you know, the networks that are established uh, and how they aid uh, entrepreneurism? Anybody? No? Okay, I'm going to move on. Um, the next question I have is for Helmut. Um, so, Helmut, uh, a tremendous amount of focus in Amman has been placed on the establishment of government programs to promote entrepreneurism. The question that I have is, you know, what opportunities are being missed because of that strong government focus? And what influence could the private sector have uh, on escalating entrepreneurism? Good question. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Shelley, first of all, also for inviting me to the panel discussion. Um, the, the interesting fact is, if you look at uh, the landscape of typical enablers for a proper SME environment, which you mentioned at the beginning, mm -hmm. you typically have uh, the dimensions along regulation, you have coordination, lead information, lead infrastructure, and you need support services, which are multiples, such as advisory services. You can have incubation services, which is a mix between advisory and infrastructure, um, financing. Yeah? So that's typically what you, what you can do in order to foster SMEs. Yeah? If you look in uh, Oman, the, the, the current landscape, it's interesting to see that the government sector is very heavily involved, particularly also on the support services side. Yeah? So actually also on the regulation, of course, but, and, and coordination information areas. But the main focus really right now is providing support services. If you compare this to the SEPA in other countries, we've done 
quite some benchmarks as part of previous projects for, mm -hmm. for supporting RIADA and other organizations. It is quite apparent that typically support services such as financing, advisory services, are largely provided by the private sector, okay. yeah, um, with the exception of, let's say, some government-funded banks, etc., but largely provided by the private sector, while the government really focuses on its role as a regulator and coordinator, ideally also providing information such as data services. Even the infrastructure, which I would also, you can see this separately or clustered it also into support services, is very often provided actually more by the private sector. Okay. So, then the, you can really, you're going to do a tick mark uh, what, what's done here by, by, by typical government players and by the private sector. This really needs to shift. The focus needs to shift from uh, being involved in this end uh, to really taking more a stimulating, regulating role. So ide ideally, if you look then, what are typical things that need to happen? Yeah, you can actually stimulate private sector provision of support services, but you shouldn't do it necessarily directly, one thing. You can, by using private sector companies, you actually fulfill a double purpose. You can actually even uh, foster SMEs that provide support services to other uh, SMEs, yeah, and at the same time push the private sector into the supporting role. Mm -hmm. Another topic also which is interesting to see is that uh, when, you, when you look at the setup, you need to have also um, in general an environment which is more, we just talked about this various time, encouraging for people to um, participate in, uh, in, in the private sector, to become mm -hmm. an as entrepreneur. So these, uh, these, the, the encouragement there partially happens also by disencouraging people to work in the public sector. Right. Yeah, that might be at the first uh, not so comfortable, but at the end of the day, it, it doesn't help if, uh, if people in, in Oman prefer to, uh, to, let's say, work in the government sector and, and not get in, in the private sector. So it's a little bit pushing people. First steps have been taken. The, the rules that, uh, that Omanis that, uh, that want to work um, in the government sector can actually work, or they, so far they could not work in the private sector, there were problems with that, that is now getting overhauled, that's a good way, but this needs to be driven more forward, yeah? okay. the same dimension. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the second aspect which is important, there's sort of a certain push yeah, by also taking back my offering. Yeah? I, I indirectly bring in the private sector, and then ultimately there's more need for coordination that is a very important role. We discussed this in one of the previous forums at the uh, Supreme Council of Planning, where uh, there's a clear mandate, for example, for Riada to become, let's say, a central coordinator. And just before the discussion, we had also the other panel discussion, again, the question of who, who is doing this. Yeah? There is actually, well, let's say, at least one natural owner that, that could take clearly up this role, and that's also been our recommendation. Then also another point which is interesting there, apart from that coordination role, the responsibilities between the different government players for providing, let's say, a regulatory environment need to be clearly established. There's also too many overlaps. Yeah? Yeah. If you look at it, it's, it's quite, quite clear what the individual ministries can do. Yeah, Ministry of uh, Manpower, of course, needs to make sure that the labor regulations are favorable for SMEs. We talked about the quotas, et cetera. Yeah, but there needs to be a establishment of the individual responsibilities, they, they are there more or less, but I think it's not that clear. And to have this coordination across the ministries, that's a, a very fundamental task. So that needs to be also coordinated. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, I feel like this particular subject is, uh, can be quite uh, controversial in the sense that, you know, to what degree do we encourage the private sector uh, in Oman to jump into encouraging entrepreneurism. Um, anybody want to ask any questions of Helmut specifically on this subject? You guys are quiet, it's after lunch. After lunch <laughs> All right. Um, I, I can add something there. Yeah. What's, what's very easy and that, that's also you can see that and what you talked about the, let's say, uh, culture of capitalism, that's yeah. all the culture of entrepreneurism, yes. uh, entrepreneurship. Um, it is just simply f celebrating success. Yes. Yeah? 
-hmm. So that is driving media coverage, being very visible on success stories um, that, that show how people actually built up their own enterprises. And that is actually not to underestimate how, let's say, a, uh, how this can actually pull people into becoming entrepreneurs themselves. Yes. I agree with you, actually, because I see that uh, the more we're positive, I mean, we have similar problems in Gaza. We don't have back bankruptcy law. The cost of starting a business, I, I'm sure it's even worse than here. I mean, in terms of rental, of renting offices and so on. Uh, but the more we create stories, the more we uh, uh, show that there are the existing ones, the more there's going to be support in the system. Yeah. And I think it's very important to highlight that because if we don't do it now, I think, I mean, this is the best time. I mean, we're going through a, a financial where we're squeezing our, uh, uh, our budgets everywhere and we want to focus on, you know, cutting costs and what's, what's better time than to, yeah. to work with entrepreneurs who are just starting and, I mean, uh, they have their, um, their, their yeah. low costs yeah. but great services and this is the time that you can actually think, okay, maybe I could... Uh, maybe I could uh, invest in these entrepreneurs that have trust in the local talent. And so the more we showcase, the more there's, there's, a, uh, there's opportunity for the startups. Yep. Do you know one of the things that I've observed here uh, since being in Oman for the last three years um, is that there's no particular media channel. And, and we've, uh, as Startup Oman, we've approached some. I certainly approached some on my own uh, solo uh, years before. I find it uh, disappointing that there is no specific media outlet in Oman that really embraces entrepreneurism and does a feature, for, you know, perhaps once a month that showcases the efforts of Omanis uh, in, you know, in this, the success stories. Because that is the kind of thing that I believe kind of gets down at the roots of entrepreneurism and makes it kind of attractive for people because they can celebrate each other. Um, you, you know, you see somebody in the street, like Rashid, you know, who won Entrepreneur's Conclave a couple of years ago. Um, you know, when you have that, that visual um, sort of identity with success, um, it allows you to approach him. You know, if you see him in the street and you're an entrepreneur, you can say, oh, I saw you, you were in the paper, and tell me about your business. And it breeds uh, a level of encouragement um, so, you know what, we'll, we'll move on past there, unless there are any questions. Yes? level uh, like there are projects from the, on the railways, which is just not going to be in Oman, but it is going to be GCC wide. Mm -hmm. So there are more, a lot of strategic uh, projects uh, in the pipeline. And uh, maybe before things really materialize, like now oil and gas is already a mature industry. Yes. Now these industries which are just growing up, these are on the, in the pipeline like Dukam, mm -hmm. the railways projects, the airports projects, like major infrastructure development. Yes. Now I feel the, the SMEs need to find out what is in in, it, in those projects for them. They are not able to appreciate the opportunity. They know these projects are coming, but how is it going to be, get uh, broken down into opportunities for these small units? So if there is a body, an institution, which is well coordinated, which is not only going to, it, it needs a system altogether, like how these mm. strategic options are broken down into such options for the SMEs, so that they think, yes, these projects are the ones that they are going to work for. This is no opportunity for them, just not the consumer products. Yeah, I uh, mean, uh, I, think I don't know if there are any organizations uh, looking into that, but I would like to know. Yeah, well, uh, not that, that I'm aware of, um, yes. but interestingly enough, um, you know, it's, it's a need. I think we heard about the need in the last session. Uh, you know, we were talking a little bit, of, I mean, although we were sort of focusing on moving outside of Oman, the reality is there's a lot of uh, projects, there's a lot of wealth, there's a lot of activity happening in Oman, and it's very difficult for entrepreneurs to understand the, the spectrum of services and products that might be needed to fulfill those, those larger scale projects, and then to, um, 
you know, understand in their own mind, is there something in that spectrum of work that's going to be done that would touch my business? And if there is, how do I then connect to it? Um, you know, I think it's, a, I think it's a, it would be a very valuable, uh, a, a valuable uh, matchmaking. Um, so one perhaps that Startup a Mom will take on. Uh, we have lots of work to do, but you know, we can add one more to the list because uh, it is very needed and I've heard that uh, a lot here. Maybe, maybe one point to add for that because I've been actually involved mm -hmm. in quite a few projects where we looked into identifying opportunities for SMEs, for example, as part of the railway construction. Funny-wise, we've done also projects like this uh, three years ago in, in, in Qatar, yeah? which organized then also a big conference where the opportunities were presented. Qatar, there was actually a project of Qatar Development Bank together with Qatar Rail. Um, these type of organizations can happen both at a level of individual organizations. Let's look into this. So mm -hmm. Oman Rail, for example, has also a dedicated work and uh, identifying clearly what are the core opportunities for SMEs. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there needs to be maybe a little bit more happening here in Oman mm -hmm. that can happen either at a company level or you would have, let's say, a, a platform. Yes. And we talked about that as well, that doing some matchmaking information, mm -hmm. providing this. This is the one side that's basically the supply. On the other side, what's always, let's say, astonishing me is that on the demand side, um, these projects then ended up sometimes in, let's say, providing business proposals that are actually featured to um, investors. That is a logic which is completely not apparent to me, mm -hmm. so at least even if I'm here since a long time, but normally what it's like, you would have, if you're an investor or if you're an entrepreneur, an upcoming entrepreneur, you write your business plan yourself. Yeah? And there is enough information out to identify actually opportunities. I mean, it's, 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 if you look into what, what, for example, large infrastructure investment, uh, this takes you actually also a bit more proactiveness. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Talk to people, they're yes. all open. It is really easy to understand, yeah. okay, what are typical areas that will require work from SMEs yeah? and where I can actually get involved. But that's where we talk about creating the spirit and having people also pulling, yeah? So that actually create the demand and not wait until they're getting served a business plan on a silver plate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is seriously... <laughs> could I get a mic at the back of the... Oh, you got a mic? Great. I, we have a question from the floor, if we could take that. Yeah, uh, first of all, hello everyone. My name is Asam Lawadi. I'm from the Harik College of Technology, a lecturer in marketing and the head of entrepreneurship side. Um, just would like to ask Ms. Aisha, as you have an incubator in your country, do you have any experience of any university business incubator um, where it could be like an incubator, but in an education in, 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 you know, level in educational institutions? So I don't know if you have experienced that in your country or no, because we have incubators but for, you know, Let's say we have students, so if there is any possibility that we could lead them during their studies, yeah. it would be a good idea as well, okay, as in you know, encouraging the ecosystem. So that's my first question to you, and if you don't mind, I can ask the other question about the engaging of in, or engagement of the private sector. How would be the information technology transfer from, you know, by focusing on developing the skills of the students, or let's say some aspects where we give the knowledge to the students about entrepreneurship, but we need to develop the skills of the students as well to be as an entrepreneur. So how the private sector and the public sector could engage in that process in terms of having a link with the educational system and the education institutions? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your question. Uh, I'm going to talk based on my experience. I'm sure you've heard of a similar experience here because I know Shadid, the Jazz Aman CEO, very well. And I used to work at Jazz before. And I think they are, I mean, it is such a great institution, uh, NGO as well. I mean, it's not even a, a government uh, based uh, organization. And they work closely with the students and universities to generate ideas, to create critical thinking. and looking at com uh, being, uh, uh, I mean, being humble about competition and losing and winning and so on. So I think the fact of having uh, organizations such as in, uh, in Jaz Oman and in Jaz Qatar and other youth centers that uh, exist in Qatar as well, uh, it makes a huge difference to generate applications and generate companies that come out of it. So uh, as an incubator, we do work closely with the uh, two organizations such as uh, in Jaz Qatar and uh, 
another one called the Daya Center, where we uh, look and they work on idea stage and they generate ideas for young people. And from there, uh, we get a lot of applications. And, but there are also other universities in Qatar that have uh, some, some sort of a pre-incubation space, like uh, Qatar University, they have the Center of Entrepreneurship. So they work uh, on programs that are related to entrepreneurship, even though they're not ready to graduate. Yani they're still studying and they're still uh, very uh, fresh students who are just graduating. Um, and uh, Carnegie Mellon University, because it's also a business school in Qatar. So th they work closely with entrepreneurship. Having said that, there's a lot of uh, non-students, not young, yani, so there are a lot of um, people who are uh, well uh, established in their careers and they're thinking of changing. And these are great resources to look at as well. Uh, yes, students are great to have, but also the ones who have experience, experiences of uh, working in a workforce and want to take their experiences elsewhere to start their own thing is another resource. And retired ones as well. I mean, we have a lot of applications that come through uh, that are retired and they have uh, funds that they want to do something about it. So it's, it's good to look at uh, the younger generation, but let's not forget who are available as well and are experienced as well. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Sorry, but yeah, because we do have in jazz competition. Yeah. We have these students, but after the competition, you know, where are they going? You know, so that's why we have this cell. It's okay. But I yeah. believe that MDC is incubating uh, some of the companies from Injaz Oman. I mean, I've I've just met a gentleman who did a company program from uh, uh, from Injaz and now being incubated at MDC. So I think, again, working with the NGOs who are working with the youth, you don't have to have that responsibility yourself, but you can work with organizations who do have these mandates and make sure that they filter you or they give you the deal flow of entrepreneurs who are ready and passionate and want to start their businesses. Uh, you don't have to do everything, but you can work with these organizations. And we've seen, I mean, even in Qatar, we incubated one company so far. And uh, we've seen the dedication. I mean, they went through the process at an early stage. They're young. They got brainwashed with, uh, with the scene of entrepreneurship. And I mean, these are their, uh, uh, deal flows that, uh, that you get. As long as you work with different organizations, even if they're not from the government, and get a deal flow from, the, from there, I think it makes a difference, even with universities. And it's good to have a space for the universities to, uh, that are related, that could establish I mean, research, uh, research centers are the starting point for universities, and then they could uh, move on to, uh, to, uh, to applications of the results of these, uh, the, these uh, research. So I think a university is a good starting point, but that I think universities should also invest in them, not just the government sector and, and so on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Aisha. Um, I'm going to move on in the interest of time. Um, to my next question, which I'm going to pose to um, Rashid. Rashid, as an SME, um, and I, I know Rashid's story, so he, uh, he's almost a fellow Canadian. Um, <laughs> he, uh, I know you've tripped over many hurdles along your way to, to being where you are today. Um, what would you like to see more of or less of um, within Oman to encourage this kind of thriving entrepreneurial sector? Thanks, Sherry, for having me. Um, While well, being an entrepreneur myself, uh, a startup of uh, four years, mm -hmm. uh, self funded, and uh, supported, uh, the business supported itself, I mean, just less than a year to break even into the business. Um, we were lucky because we came up with a, a model that was right at the right time. Okay. Not everyone has the same opportunity to uh, actually enter the market at the right time. But then we were struck uh, by our own success, growing too fast and being too small with less resources. Um, seeking the resources uh, to, sell, to uh, save our business was uh, not a at a small task. Okay. So the things that uh, challenged our business, uh, to begin with uh, policies, mm -hmm. such as uh, when uh, we came up with an innovative uh, idea that did not even exist when you go and ask for permits. They did not have such uh, codes I've heard, I've heard this such story thing. before. 
<laughs> so we were led to accept something that is kind of related to our business, but it's not. Mm -hmm. So to expedite the process and avoid uh, the uh, rent that you're actually paying, starting paying before you even establish your business, that's actually mm -hmm. hurt uh, most of the businesses. Yes. So we, we agree and went with it, but then when it came time to hire, the hiring force did not match our code, so mm -hmm. uh, we hit another brick wall. So one thing led to another, uh, and uh, if there is anything that I could ask is the, I mean, you, you are actually promoting and uh, encouraging innovation within the youth, and the youth will come up with the uh, latest in the market. Because mm -hmm. uh, if you come up with uh, something that is existing in the market, I don't think you will actually succeed. You want to come up with maybe same thing, but have a twist mm -hmm. with it. But that changes everything. Yes. And the infrastructure, the policies, the regulations needs to change with that. Yes. That's an interesting, uh, I've, I've heard similar stories of people who started businesses that had never been thought of before. And that when they went, like yourself, to the, the ministries to get their uh, CRs, which then have to follow some incredible, um, you know, filtering process of what you fit into, um, it took them years to get to a place where they had moved the ministry to recognize what they were doing as a bona fide business opportunity and then give them an, an appropriate classification number so that this person could exist. Um, so, you know, going back to the CBO report, which I think, you know, this is kind of, you know, if I could get on my pedestal, I'd be up here right now telling you all this, that um, it's the regulatory, right? I mean, there's this issue where there's just this, um, it's just this machine. It's kind of like the elephant in the room that doesn't move. And I think what, um, from my perspective, I think something that could encourage entrepreneurs in here in Oman it would just be to get that to be a bit more flexible, a bit more adaptable, so that people like yourself who have come up with innovative ideas can go and get their CRs and start to progress down the road to do their work um, without getting encumbered in this kind of heavy, heavy weighted bureaucracy. All right. Yes, uh, I will add to that uh, financing small businesses, it's not the only thing. I mean, money is Agreed. not the main thing into uh, businesses. There is a lot of things that small businesses need. I mean, uh, when you talk about marketing yes. your business, I mean, you give someone funds, but then after you're giving them the money, then they need uh, the knowledge to actually market themselves, the mm -hmm. knowledge to, mar to manage finances, the mm -hmm. knowledge of uh, when once they grow and they hire more people, then they need knowledge of operation and human resources and so mm -hmm. forth. And I'll just give one example. Um, when you go to commercial banks and uh, you go into the SME department, and if uh, your business happens to actually provide a service to that particular bank, there is no departments that actually, um, I mean, a lot have been spoken about different governments. There's no synergy between different government mm -hmm. entities. Uh, within the banks themselves, they don't have uh, the synergy between departments. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. you're an SME and you can provide a service within that bank, so that will enable, enable you to actually pay back mm -hmm. the loan within ease because you've gained a contract and you've gained a client, which is the first one who's funding you, becoming your client, you've already established the trust, but that's, that link's also missing. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. And, and I, you know, from my own experience, uh, you know, that's often a byproduct of uh, these very, very large organizations where the individual departments are in themselves like little cities, you know, that don't really, they don't uh, have a good, um, they don't have good communication between the, uh, so yeah, I appreciate it. It's a, it's a, it's a big challenge, <laughs> a very big challenge. Um, I, my last question for this panel um, is to Jalal. Um, Jalal, the, um, let me just see which question I have for you, because it's a good one. Here it is. Um, um, the best one. Yeah, <laughs> it's a meaty one. Um, so I've noticed since I've been in Oman, um, that Oman's ecosystem uh, has a focus on getting 
uh, Oman SMEs in step with their international counterparts. And we've spoke a lot about that over the last you know, day and a half. Um, how, do you, how do you bring international standards to Oman and get Oman outside? We were just talking about that last session. Um, what do you think that we can do to ensure that our, uh, you know, our brightest SMEs um, can compete on an international platform? Yeah. Remove the government out of caring about the SME. Okay. Hand it over to private sector. We care about our money, where we're going to start. Shell did a good job, but you saw out of God knows how many companies, they only have 15 that succeeded, 10%. Now, very easily, I wish I was there with him and, the, you know, we could talk to him. The reason they failed is because after they finished the program, they just dropped him. You never do that. If you're going to take a student, if you're going to take an entrepreneur, he doesn't want just books. He doesn't want you to give him in college. Yeah, okay, I understand the gentleman over there that they teach in his college entrepreneurship. Apparently now it's a mandatory thing from the Ministry of Higher Education and also the Ministry of Education, right? But that's just knowledge. Entrepreneurs don't need just knowledge. They need the knowledge plus the experience plus mentoring, holding hands, mm -hmm. as Kimji just said. What you need is something like, you're talking about capitalism, all right? Oman is neither. We're not capitalism, we're not non-capitalism, mm -hmm. all right? If you're going to talk capitalism, then you need to introduce people like venture capital. Mm -hmm. Venture capital was, you know, like fill all the gaps that you have in Oman. Venture capitalists will do what they do in an incubator, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we don't leave them after three months. Correct. We stay with them for three years because we want to get the, you know, the return back on our investment. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we keep business for seven years, ten years, depending on the return on investment. All right. Now VCs could cover that. Coming back to ecosystem. When you talk about entrepreneurship ecosystem, it's not about money. You know, people a lot think that, okay, let's put funds, let's do finance, let's do this. It's not about that. Mm -hmm. Regulatory, barriers of entry, mm -hmm. you know, first come to market, first not come to market. What industries you want to target? If we want to work on it, then the government has to first of all step in, like we discussed in the previous panel, give us data. Tell us what industries are oversaturated, what industries are not touched, mm -hmm. and then we, this is like an accelerator. You find the right entrepreneur to fill that gap. That's number one. Then you give them mentoring and guiding. That doesn't exist in Oman. Mm -hmm. Also, you need, well, they say we have, but it doesn't exist. Let's be honest, all right? We have training. Training workshops, trainings, this is for brush up. You give it to them later on, you know? Then you need to move into finance. Okay, let's go. Rafat gives you 50,000. All right, what happens next year if your business did so well you want to expand? There is no tranche one, there is no tranche two finance, there is no mise en mm -hmm. all right? Speaking about Qatar, all right? I had a gentleman called Faisal Al Abdullah came to our company in Dubai for finance, and he wanted to do cartoons. You know, you know like what happened in Dubai, the cartoons that came out like Farij, all right? Now, I don't think he came to you guys because this was like four or five years ago. Yeah. When he came to us, you know, a lot of banks won't give him finance to make a cartoon, right. all right? Now, that's entrepreneurship. The guy believed in his idea. He's an artist. He wants to draw like Japanese. He's actually an investor at the moment yes. as well. He came to us, and what we did is we believed in his idea, yeah. you know? Then he became successful, and this is what we're trying to say. Well, you know, that's interesting because in the arts in particular, so I'm, now I'm back uh, at Duha's uh, discussion of earlier today. Um, you know, there are a lot of platforms that you can crowdfund your arts program, you know, your, 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 your animation um, series, your book, your movie. Um, but, you know, in Oman, it gets a bit uh, complicated. Um, I mean, if I wanted to do an Indiegogo uh, platform, let's say I was going to make a movie, I can do that. I can do that from anywhere in the world. I can do it from here. Uh, I can get on, I can talk to people about my fabulous idea for this cartoon, I put up my, my, my project, and for every amount of money that I get, you know, I offer something, I offer a t-shirt with the, the insignia of my cartoon on it, then I, you know, they get free tickets to come see the, the launch of it. Um, the money can go into a PayPal account, my PayPal account can be connected to another uh, banking system if the Oman <coughs> banking system doesn't, doesn't uh, support transfers between PayPal and the banking system, and voila, you know, you've now got an Omani entrepreneur who's got an arts background, who's creating a movie, who's crowdfunded it and raised money and has to go outside yeah, but, of but there Oman. Are, there, 
there are three types, the three different types of crowdfunding. There mm -hmm. is the crowdsourcing, what the lady was yes. talking about today. Mm -hmm. But then you have equity crowdfunding. Yeah, and crowd there investing. is the standard crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now yeah. in the US, crowdfunding all started in universities. People yeah. are trying to, you know, have a concert. Yeah. So they started, you know, mm -hmm. promoting it on Facebook yeah. between them, right? Now with the Jobs Act, mm -hmm. three, four years ago by Obama, now it is regulated. The UK yes. regulated crowdfunding even before, mm -hmm. all right? Now we are trying to do crowdfunding in Oman, mm -hmm. all right? But at the end of the day, still I come back to my question, is the culture ready? Who will, I'm not talking about entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I'm sure entrepreneurs will be so happy to put their videos, pitch mm -hmm. up and all that. Are Omanis willing to finance Omanis? Are the Omanis mm -hmm. willing to put their credit card, assuming that, because see, when you're talking about crowdfunding equity, mm -hmm. you're actually a VC. Why? Because yes. he as an investor is going to trust me yes. as the crowdfunding platform mm -hmm. that I'm going to control the money he will take yes. to protect his shares. So I became a VC online, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. But how do you operate in Oman? Coming back to regulations. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is some countries, we're not copy-pasting, but mm -hmm. some countries, let's take the good of everybody and, you know, learn from their mistakes. Some countries, they privatized registration. Mm -hmm. Actually, one of my companies, we do company formation. And we do that all online. Mm -hmm. You know, we get a gentleman who comes in, I want to open this. We have a file, we know what goes on, mm -hmm. all right? But it's privatized, like mm -hmm. what we have, Senate, all right? But I'll tell you the truth. Would you bring a multimillionaire and take him to Senate? I mean, honest, let's mm -hmm. talk about it, all right? Now, Senate is a good initiative, right? But also don't stop the private sector from having their own platform, just like Senate. Mm -hmm. Somewhere where people could go. I mean, you have ministry, I'm sorry, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, not di I'm not getting out of it, but this is the thing. You have the Ministry of Housing now. All their life, they didn't believe in VIP service. Now you go to the Ministry of Housing, you pay 100 real, you get your mulkiya in one day. Mm -hmm. All right, and there are Omanis who are willing to pay. So like when he's saying regulations were against him, all right, if you came to him instead of him getting frustrated and you said, you pay an extra 50 real, you gotta get it in two, three days. At least he will know what he needs to do. That's mm -hmm. number one. Number two, other countries now, if you go to them and you say, actually neighboring countries, I want this activity. They don't know what it is. I mean, we went to them with a personal shopper activity. Mm -hmm. The guy got lost. <laughs> and what they said, I said, okay, I'm sorry. He said, no, 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 don't leave. You write the letter, write what you want to have. We'll answer you within 72 hours. Mm -hmm. Within 72 hours, they came back to us with a code of the activity. Why don't Oman does that? Mm -hmm. If the government is too busy, then why don't you private that? We privatize a lot of mm -hmm. factories and a lot of services. So at least privatize this. You know what I mean now? Because yeah, this is part of the ecosystem. Can I add something? Sorry, but I don't, what's stopping the private sector from creating a fund? Of Regulation. Investment? Why don't you open the fund outside of Oman and see, still be a group of Omanis to establish and support? Well, Oman. this is what my company does right now. We're registered in the U.S. At, under the SEC, yeah. all right? But the problem is the regulations in Oman are so mm -hmm. strict. I cannot take money or give money inside Oman. I cannot but collect money. A, I'm sure there's a way. I mean, I, I just want to add something. Mm. In terms of uh, the private sector investing, I think before we actually look for investors, I think that the, the role of the private sector is to educate people about angel investments and venture capitals. I think the education part comes before mm. because we, are, we do have investments, but our inv way of thinking of investments comes through family businesses. I mean, uh, a lot of the big families, I mean, I'm talking about Qatar now. A lot of the big families in Qatar have an investment arm that Sheikh Flan, or Sharika Flania, someone who is actually famous in family businesses. In his company, there's an investment arm. And if a member of his family is looking to start a business, they could actually invest in them. And this is very common in the Khalij. I mean, Talabad.com got his investment from his father the CEO of Talabad.com. So the investment, the way of investment is just different from the Western type of investment yeah. because yeah. It, trans it, uh, it filters through mm -hmm. family businesses. Yeah, but sorry, I mean, I know this is Qatar, but, but in Oman you have 95% of the population, not part of the big 5% that own <laughs> the big family, but yeah. I'm being very yeah. honest. So normal entrepreneurs cannot have their families finance them. So yeah. that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but uh, the, then the, there's these, comp the, these investors or the ones who actually, like yourself, who are very uh, passionate about investing in small companies, could take the role of educating people about investments and angel investments because 
before there's a huge I mean, we come in from an environment that is very well protected but in a, we're very well protected when it comes to this generation our parents have not been raised the way we've been raised so I mean for, for them to take something that is totally different out of what is available is something new in the culture and احنا الياهل يصيح يعني امي امي وابوي يشيلونها لكن انا ما بشيلها عرفت شلون انا ابيها تتعلم ابيها لكن لكن when it comes to the different generations they've worked so hard so they want to protect the new generation when the new generation wants to start something new there needs to be an educational platform before there's there's a regulation that could help and and panel it we could play with the with the regulations ايش بيصير افتح لك fund somewhere somewhere That's outside what we're doing right now. i mean yeah and we can do that i mean we can create this platform that. in the gcc where we encourage and support angel investors and vcs and even if we can play with the regulations for the time being i'm leaving in a couple of hours back to doha but even if we can play uh, uh, with the regulations but if we have the role of education educating people about the vcs and angel investment that's the first step, and then the others would follow. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap up. Is there any questions from the floor that anybody would like to pose to our speakers, our panelists? Are we good? All right, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.